Hey all, it's Mooch. Just a quick video to show you some of the issues involved when measuring temperature of metals with an infrared gun or a thermal imaging camera. Uh, I've got uh, a mech right down here, pretty close up, and the bottom half of it, uh, let's see if I can do this, along here, there's a piece of black um, electrical tape. The line is right here, and up on top here is the polished stainless steel. This is a mech, a stainless, polished stainless mech. And I'm going to show you the problems involved when trying to measure temperatures using the infrared thermal imager. Now I'm going to take 30 amps, starting now, to flow through here. The biggest problem is that metal itself is a really terrible emitter of infrared radiation. Namely, it has a very low emissivity. And using the black electrical tape, provides a matte surface for the heat to essentially come up, uh, hit the tape, and then be converted to infrared radiation. Now you can actually see that reflection appearing as I rotate the tape out of the way of the background, but you can see the button now is showing its heat just fine, which is about 30 degrees Celsius, whereas the top half of the mech up here, you see how it shows my finger? That's what it's going to show the infrared for, since the background that this mech is facing is cool, that's what you read the temperature as, very cool. Whereas if I have something hot, like maybe a light source, like if I pull this out of the way, there's all the background stuff, and I put this back in front of it. And so it's very hard to get accurate readings when you're trying to measure metal. Now this is polished metal. With a brushed metal, it's a little bit better, but it's always better to get something matte, like black electrical tape, and to reinforce that, here's a piece of tape that I just took and I'm going to lay it down on top of the mech and you see how now I can see the temperature because the tape itself heats up the tape matte black is a very good emitter of uh, infrared radiation namely it has a high emissivity and if I pull this tape off let's see let me grab hold of this you see the metals back to cool and now the tape is starting to cool down except of course when my fingers touching it so that little bit of what some of the problems are involved. This time it's an uh, anodized aluminum mech and you can see this spot here that looks a little different. In fact you can see the reflection. That's where I filed off the anodizing so I could do a resistance measurement of the tube itself but all the rest of it is anodized and you can just see barely catching the reflection from the anodized part but you can see how the reflection shows you the temperature of the reflections and not of the metal itself. And let's apply 30 amps continuous to this mech and take a look what happens. Now you can see the button heating up. The tube is starting to finally warm up and get some heat from the button, but look at that spot, the reflective spot. Up towards, where's my finger? There we go, up towards here. You can see my finger was, all kinds of things come out when you uh, infrared. You can see my finger was a little warmer from hitting the button. Even though the button's only 32 degrees C, it looks white hot, but only 32 C. Now we can see the tube getting a little warmer, starting to take a little more of the heat from the button. We're still only at 32 Celsius for max temperature, so we're, it's, just barely, it's not even really warm yet. But you can see now that unless we paint matte black spray paint or put electrical tape or do something to bare metal, we're going to read too low. And this goes for using uh, infrared guns or using thermal imaging cameras, our reading is going to be way too low. Because if we look on the left hand side, 23C is the dark blue, and that's what this is showing here, 23C. But we know it's not, because directly next to it, we can see it somewhere probably around you know, 32C or something like that. Now at higher temperatures, the difference can be much greater. So that's just a couple things to be uh, considering when you're using infrared guns or thermal imaging cameras make sure to have a surface that is matte and provides opaque covering over the metal so it can re-emit the infrared radiation that the metal is so bad at doing. Thanks for watching.